This week I called into the traditional Irish stick maker, Mr. John Daly. He's from Navan there, about an hour north of Dublin in Ireland. And so when I was collecting the sticks, I asked him just to explain a little bit to me about how he makes them and what goes into making a good stick. John, I look at these sticks and all, and they're real rough and all when they come in. How do you get them? How do you get them so straight? Like, how do you get them straight like that when they've all them bends in them? Well, basically, you have to go to the, to the wood, and you pick out a suitable piece of hazel or blackthorn, but it has to be reasonably straight. There's no point in bringing home something that's got dog legs or going to give you a ridiculous amount of work. So basically, yeah, take a stick down on my cut. Let's mm. get a stick like this that's reasonably straight. Yes. And the next thing you're going to have to do is ideally you should steam them. Yes. But if they're reasonably straight, you can take them to the to the hot air gun. Yeah. So oh yeah, and so you heat them a bit with the gun. Yeah, heat, heat them with the gun. Oh, and the other thing is, these don't just come straight out of the forest. You have you have to. Why are they up there? You dry them for a year they're or something. They're airing. They're going to have to be at least three years. Oh. Two to three years, depending on the size of the material. And this one is 25 millimeter, one inch. It's going to take at least one year. Oh, I didn't but, know that. But it has to be completely, absolutely dry. So you might as well leave it two years. So yes. that when you have it finished, that it's not going to shrink. Yeah, it. it's never going to shrink or change. You know, because it'll fit the size of the horn. It has to, it has so to stay like that. the horn to suit the stick. Yeah. And you don't want it to dry or change over a period of time. So if it's dry and aired, well aired, nice and slow, at about two years. It never, never walk on uh, one year's wood. It has to be two years drying. I never thought of that. Sure, that joint then that has to be. It that, has it, that. That joint has to be perfect. Yeah, you couldn't have that timber shrinking in no, six months time. Was, or anything. That won't. That may alter either as well. But you cannot afford to have your wood shrink and leave the horn to because you're going to have a, a roughness in the joint. It's not going to be smooth. I know what you mean. I know. I've so seen that they're, before. They're yeah. Reasonably good. Yes. You can take them with the hot air gun. I'm just warm it up there, because you're thinking that, and that's what they are. Put a bit of heat into it. And you can only heat it so much, there is no particular time. If it's warm, it will go, and if it's not warm, it won't go. So you just give it a little bit of heat like that. See how you get on. Now in the olden days, they used to put them on across their knees. Yes. But we don't do that anymore. Yeah. That's the hardship. Yeah. So I have a little kind of a press here. From oh, the, yeah. A little bit of a, a mechanism of, I kind of designed or made up myself here. You just put it in there like that. There's the problem spot there. Just give a little bit of press there like that. If it's warm enough, it'll go. Now, that's not warm enough. Yeah. But if it's warm, it will go. Yes, yes. And so you just keep turning it and watching it by just eye keep, there if you're happy yeah, with it. Just, just keep giving a bit of a press like that. Yes. Keep a bit of an eye on it. Need another little bit of heat. That's basically how you straight them. Keep going on down around until you have the stick straight. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's going so, to take about 10 to 15 minutes if it's reasonable. Yes, yes. But there's no point in starting on something that's ridiculously bent or at the dog drain. Yeah, so you cold. must spend a good bit of time then in the winter rooting around for hazels or if you have a few places you know where you'll, well, you'll get them. Or? When you're as long ahead as I am, you'll know where to go and where not to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you don't bring rubbish home if you can at all. Yes. But basically, I, I have I have cut stuff and brought home and a year later you'll be looking at it and say, who cut that? What was I thinking? What was I thinking when I cut that? You know what I mean? So tell me then the next step. I was looking at the horn you had over here that was sanded down or rasped down. What's the next step? I thought you see you just throw it into boiling water or something, but it's not that simple. Well, as you can see, it has got a uh, concave and a convex in it. So ideally, you have to take any of the rough off. Yeah. And then boil it. So when you get it down to this, the well, next. That, no, no. I, if you hold up a second. Where is the other one? There's another one here. One there. So. Oh, when it, when yes. It, when it comes off the animal. Yes. It's, it's like so. Big now, this happened horn, to be yeah. Jacobs. This is just a normal ram horn. But that, that is a coloured horn. Yes. So it basically has that shape to it. And look, it's too big and bulky. Yeah. You've got to take some of the excess off. Yes. And you arrive at something like this. Yes. Which is much less of the bulk. Yeah. So you've got to. Um, Put that in a little press and press the concave out. Yes. As it has to be oval shaped. And you take some of that roughness off, take the excess off, and you end up done with something like this. Oh, now yeah. this is ready for actually working on. Yes. 
And what does working on now? How do you turn well, that into one of those nice handles? You're going to have to plug that yeah. with some fresh wood or something that's soft and put it in the press. Yes. A, a bulking jacks, a yeah. jig, and then bring it down to start forming this shape here. Yeah. But it takes time and work. How, how long does it take uh, to, well, for us? How long was the piece of string? <laughs> I can't answer that question. Yeah. But uh, you could be very lucky. You know, and it would run well for you and continue on and it'd be a success. But yeah. it could also be a problem in there. There could be blood blister in there. The animals are banging their heads so it can be damaged. So it's definitely going so to So some, sometimes you get a horn down to this or maybe before this and you realise this horn's a waste of time. I can't go any further with well, it. Well, you have a lot of work done before you get to that. Yeah. I, I have a lot of work done with this already. But I think this will be a success. Yes. But it's unfortunate you can make a mistake or you can have a blood blister and it can go bang. It's, yeah. It's ruined on you. It is a, a Johnson an awful lot of time, isn't it? Well, but it's There's a big input in everyone we does. Don't, we don't worry about time. Time is, when you get to my age, time, <laughs> time doesn't really matter. You just, it's, yeah. it's a hobby basically. Yeah. You know, but, but then, to, they'll take a long time, but if somebody looks after these sticks, they'll have years and years out of them, I won't they? if somebody gets that stick and looks after it, yeah. you know, it will last a lifetime. Yes. They will get broken. Yes. I'm sure they will if they've been worked yeah. with lads and dogs and jeeps and throw them in the dogs or, and maybe throw a sheep in on them. Oh yeah, and I'd have to replace the yeah. shaft every now and yeah, again. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they will get worn, they will get damaged, but they can always be removed. Yeah. If they're made properly, they can be removed and reshanked. You and told me before too that, that you make it, there's a dowel on the wood and it goes up into the That's harness. Correct, yeah. And and if a lad did break a stick, how do you go about replacing the stick undoing the giant? Cut that half there. Yeah. And drill it out. Or oh, just drill out a bit of timber, yeah. No and then problem taking it up back ready out. for a new dowel. No problem. If it's made right, made properly, there'd be no, no problem. These are made in a conventional manner. There's a dowel formed on the end of the shank, hole drilled in the horn, put in, glued in, that's it. Ah, yeah. End of story. Now, there are other methods and other ways. Well, I, 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 do I had a rough one one time I bought. I can't remember where it came from. No, my friend John Heffernan gave it to me. Yeah. And it was a buffalo horn. And I didn't like the stick. There was an old sycamore shaft on it. And I cut it off. But it had a big bolt going up instead yeah, of a that, dowel. If that happens, some people, instead of making a traditional dowel and put it into the horn here, they sometimes use thread of bar or, or a pin of some yeah. description. That'd be functional too, but functional, at least... But not uh, for me. Yeah, if yeah. you have a problem... They have a problem. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, okay, maybe you could retrieve it, but I don't do that. Yes. I make it all conventional way, drill a hole, pop it in, glue it up. Yeah. And that should be it. The if it breaks, it can be removed out, drilled. And new shaft. A new shaft. And, and whoever used the new shaft would want to have it drying for about two years before they put it into it too. <laughs> so John, what's the difference to these leg crooks? <laughs> well, sorry, Paddy, you're making me laugh. Like... <laughs> Obviously, these are basically neck crooks. Yes. Or, or uh, a smaller version of it here. But this is basically a leg cleek. Yes. To be used. Uh, now, they say there's no specific size for them. Show me the way you work out the size there. Well, I have a little template there when I'm making them. But the, 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 old, the old theory was that uh, it had to be the shape of an old English penny. Here, approximately there like that. Yes. Now, that one is just isn't exactly that size, but... That's an idea. Yeah. And uh, the old half penny was the size here. Oh, yes, yes. So th that's approximately the size and approximately the shape. There'll be no specific measurement for this. Yes. It's guidelines. Yes. Basically, it has to be straight around the shank here, straight here, straight here, approximately a little bit heavier than the shank goes up to there, a little bit narrower as it goes round to the point. And that's the, they're only guidelines. That's yeah. That's the basic shape. It's used as a leg cleek. Yeah. Rather than a neck crook. Ah, uh, yes. Now, tell me this. I was saying to you that there was a little bit of horn there. And I say, how come you wouldn't just sand it out? What did you say to me? Well, it, it's just a little bit lacking in, in, in fullness there. You just needed but, a little more body yeah, or that. Yeah, a little bit. But if it's, if it's not in it. Yeah. It's not in it. Yeah. And there's no pain for the sake of uh, taking off a little bit of a groove that's in it. Like, if this is going to be worked yes. as it should be, it won't be long before there'll be a lot of marks on yes, it. Yes, mine all and have like, plenty of marks you, on them. You yourself, of all people, should know, a walking stick Yeah. It's not a showpiece. Yeah, no, this is a functional yeah. piece it's of a functional, equipment. a functional stick. A functional stick. 
Ah, uh, yeah, no, and that's perfect. I tell you, yeah. now that's the sort of stick I'd like for myself. Only I have a bit too many sticks, but I think I'll take that one anyway. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much, John. No problem, Paddy.